Since Atmos QS1000 is not actually a sound card, but a wavetable chip used in many different sound cards and daughter boards, this is gonna be a short video. ROM size differs from card to card. As far as I know, there are two versions out there. One with half a meg and the second one with 2 megabytes of ROM. I assume there should be a difference in terms of quality between different cards with different ROM size. I've got only one card though, cheap Labway with ESS 1868F sound chip. This card features half a meg of ROM and 32 voice polyphony, so I don't expect much, but it may surprise me. I use generic ESS drivers in which I set ports, IRQs and DMAs to default values and also disable joystick port. Then I crank the master and synth volume up to the maximum values and down to zero for the rest. I don't need to test ESS chip again, I'm here just for the QS1000. It's also unnecessary to test games without general MIDI support. So let's hear what it can do. Doom and Doom 2 always work, it's no surprise. However, something very strange happened when I ran Duke 3D setup. After setting up music card, you can test the card in the menu below. I of course set the card to general MIDI, but the test gave me a message that it could not detect MPU 401. I tried to run the test again, and all of a sudden, it worked. I saved the settings, left the setup and ran the game. But the bloody game didn't start and gave me the same message that it could not detect music card. I tried running the game over and over again until the music card was initialized and the game started normally with music. To make sure that the card is still working, I had to try Doom again, which was working fine before. And as always, Doom worked. Then back to Duke again. To get it running, I still need a couple of attempts. That was bloody weird, but let's crack on with the test. Just when I thought that everything is going alright, I entered Gabriel Knight setup. On again, setup didn't detect any general MIDI device. I didn't even try to rerun the setup, I just set the general MIDI manually and left the program. I was expecting the same behavior as in Duke's case, but the game started fine and the music played fine as well. I tried to run the game again a couple of times to make sure it's working fine and it works every time. Since Sierra usually uses the same setup program, I was tempted to try other Sierra games. And as I thought, they behaved pretty much the same.
Then I tried Ultima 8. It uses the same setup as Bioforge and it worked perfectly. Pretty much the same scenario as in Duke's case happened with Rise of the Triad. I needed to set the card about 10 times before I got it working in the setup and about the same amount of attempts to run the game without crashing due to missing music device. Heroes of Might and Magic 2 uses Miles Sound Drivers as many other games and it always works, even with some more, let's say, difficult sound cards. This, unfortunately, wasn't the case. This time, it took me about 50 tries to set the sound card and about 100 to get the game running. And this is where it went downhill quite rapidly. I chose just games with mild drivers and tested all of them. However, none of them worked, no matter how many times I tried. I was not sure if it was the problem with the card, the QS1000 itself or the rest of the hardware. I tried different drivers, different hardware, different hardware settings, but it was still the same. Until I dug up an old Socket 7 board with Pentium processor. And voila, it works like a bloody charm. For a cheap half mech wavetable chip, I gotta say it doesn't sound bad. Of course it can't compare with high end cards, but it certainly can make a nice sound. In some games it sounds quite good, depending on used instruments of course. In others it sounded bland and lacked punch and sometimes the instrument sounded a bit off to me. But in the end it's always in the ear of the listener. So what you reckon dear viewer? How does it sound to you? I wouldn't pay more than 20 quid for this card, it's not worth more than that. It may be a nice addition to someone's collection to play games with a bit different instrument or if somebody wants a cheap wavetable card and doesn't want to spend more money. However, the issue with games not detecting the card on newer hardware is less than ideal. If you've got Pentium 1 or older, you should be alright. It's a bit problematic on Pentium 2 and newer hardware though. I'd still like to test another card with QS1000 chip to see if the issue is the chips or the card's fault, my bets on the QS1000. And that's all I've got for you today. Catch you in the comments and bye for now.